lesson from the day in the past It's gonna be a blast Johnny and Harmon are the main event podcast Hey everybody, what's going on? No Big Bad Harmon tonight No Big Bad Harmon, unfortunately But we have found a suitable replacement That in the form of Regulator, what's happening, my man? I would say suitable is a stretch. Suitable, that's a stretch. Is but it a stretch? Much, okay. <laughs> much like, much like Kurt Angle replacing Roman Reigns, much like AJ Styles replacing Bray Wyatt. Gregulator is here, trying to fill the shoes of Big Bad Harmon, and uh, he is suffering from viral meningitis. <laughs> no, I would. No, 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 no. That would be hilarious, though, wouldn't it Are be? You sure? <laughs> right? No. Uh, I don't know. Harmon just got some stuff going on tonight. Definitely oh, uh, not viral uh, meningitis. But, well, uh, you know. You know. But it's got some, come yeah, got some stuff going on. Uh, it's going to take the night off. Um, this is the first episode Harmon has missed all year, which is uh, well done, BBH. Well done. Um, but, yeah, we're getting towards the end of the year. We're both, uh, you know, getting a little... Getting a little sleepy, a little tired uh, down the home Ooh. stretch. So you have worked your asses off. We have, you know, it's been a fun year, um, yeah. and uh, yeah, it's been great, man. It's been this awesome. This is crazy. This is uh, you guys have, you know, I am on the Twitter account with you guys, so I see like all the interaction and all the following now that you guys have, and it's it's awesome. Yeah, thanks, man. Well, I mean, you guys, like you, uh, Dave Dyer, Dusty Boosh, I mean, um, man, you guys were like right uh, right with us, you know, it's like the grassroots of this whole thing and, and even on the old podcast. So, uh, you know, we have you guys to thank and, uh, you know, for kind of keeping us going. And then obviously uh, Limitless Wrestling has been a huge advocate of ours and uh, and vice versa. So, yeah, man, it's fun. Uh, it's super fun, but it is uh, it is uh, tiring sometimes. It is it does take a lot of our time. Uh, I, usually, I'm up to the wee hours of the night editing and you know posting the uh, <laughs> the episodes and trying to promote the show on social media and everything. Um, and uh, you know, and Harmon does a lot of the social media stuff too. And he's out. He's actually out more on the like do, doing a lot of like. The uh, the foot patrol kind of he's going to shows a lot more shows than I am. He just uh, I believe he just went down to uh, where'd he go? I think he went down to Mass for something the other day. Uh, yeah. Oh, it was a game. He went to uh, he went to a game's uh, birthday party down at uh, Kowloon's. So that was that was cool. He went down there, hung out, uh, mingled with a lot of people, and uh, you know it's uh, get, gets the name out there, and uh, it's cool. Uh, he he is definitely better at that than, than I am. So, um, yeah, man, it's been a wild ride this year. So, uh, we're looking forward to kind of ending the year strong and, uh, maybe, you know, contemplating, maybe taking some time off at the end of the year and then, and then coming back at the beginning. So of next year, so we'll see what happens. But, uh, anyway, back to, back to you, Greg, you've, uh, what have you been up to, man? You've joined us a few times here on the show. I believe you've done some tournaments with us. Uh, you've done a movie review or am I off base on that? Uh, I have yet to do a movie no. review, um, but I have been on several of our tournament of your tournament shows, and I filled in a couple times um, for Harmon back on the old podcast. Right, right, yep. Um, but it's been a while since I've done that, and um, I've been a third man in quite a few times. I'd yeah. say, yeah, yeah, semi regular Greg. <laughs> Semi regular Greg. That's right. You've uh, we've coined that nickname for you. Harmon came up with that, I believe. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, what have you been up to lately, man? Do anything fun? Uh not nothing too exciting. Nothing too exciting. I've been going to limitless shows with you guys. Um, I think it's great what they've done in for wrestling in Maine. I mean, every show is unbelievable. I am like out of my seat like 75 percent of the time i feel like when i go to the shows it's uh they're completely exhausting but like in a good way i would say um so the local wrestling has been fantastic 
Uh, I've also been uh, keeping up with WWE, which can also be exhausting in its own way because it's <laughs> yes. early on almost every night. So Yes, I know, right? Uh, yeah. Well, we're going to talk a little WWE tonight. Uh, we are going to cover. Uh, we're going to cover TLC a little bit. Uh, we're, yep. we're not going to do like a full review, but we'll just we'll kind of pick apart the highlights, the lowlights, uh, whatever, and um, we'll kind of talk current state of WWE, and uh, then we'll kind of throw uh, throw some names at each other, some some current superstars. Uh, you know, see what uh, what our thoughts are about where they're at and what they're doing and stuff. So we've got uh, some names. I've got some names for you. Uh, I'd like to get your thoughts on. Sure. Uh, let's see. Yeah, before we dive into that, let's get into some quick plugs. Uh, listeners at home, you guys can check us out on Twitter at Main Event Pod. You guys can check us out on Facebook, facebook.com slash Main Event Pod, and on Instagram at Main Event Pod. We are on Podbean and iTunes. We have a Teespring store. It is located... Uh, it doesn't have like a fancy URL or anything. It's a like a really annoying URL. So it's uh, it's actually pinned at the top of our Twitter and Facebook pages. There, uh, we just cleaned it up a little bit, kind of limited the shirt colors, and uh, kind of made it a little bit more precise, a little bit easier for you guys to decide uh, what colors and styles and stuff you want of uh, of t-shirts. We've got some hoodies. Prices are cheap. Prices are really cheap. Uh, I believe t-shirts are fifteen bucks. Hoodies are twenty five. Uh, kids are like 12, uh, and stickers, I believe are like three bucks. So we got some stickers up there as well. Um, and, uh, if you do go on there, there's a, a limited edition, uh, purple shirt. Uh, it is, a uh, we'll make kind of a big announcement for it next month, but, uh, it, it's pretty self-explanatory. If you guys, uh, click on it, you'll see that it, it's a, it's a shirt and it's a 100%, 100% of the, uh, proceeds will go to charity uh, benefiting uh, pancreatic cancer uh, research. Uh, next month, November, is Pancreatic Cancer uh, Awareness Month. And so that is uh, where 100% of the proceeds to that T-shirt will go to. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, I'll have one in in time to wear uh, to Limitless uh hybrid moments uh on the third because uh just so happens that the whole like color scheme for like their promos and stuff are purple so it'd be very uh, it'd be a nice little tie in there so uh speaking of limitless wrestling hybrid moments uh november 3rd at the portland club it's at 156 state street in portland maine uh that is a venue change uh it was going to be at the armory but it got changed uh to the to the portland club um cool. So yeah, get your tickets, LimitlessWrestling.com. Uh, unfortunately, because of the uh, venue change, they're limited on, on tickets. So I think it's like 75 tickets less than uh, what they could have sold at the Armory, which is a bummer. Um, so if you want tickets, get them soon, like real soon, like right now. Go now, get it. Because uh, <laughs> the show looks great. Um, Ace Romero versus Sammy Callahan, that's nuts. Um Josh Briggs versus Darby Allen. Uh, Darby Allen stepping in for uh, Teddy Hart, who uh, who had to uh, back out, unfortunately, had to deal with some some legal issues. He wrote like this unbelievable uh, letter uh, and let everybody know ahead of time about it, uh, and it was super classy. And uh, Teddy Hart is just the best, and I can't wait to see him in Maine again when he gets things straightened out and back there or back here. Uh, Maxwell Jacob Friedman versus Jonathan Gresham. Uh, super pumped to see Gresham back uh, in Limitless. Uh, last time I saw him wrestle in Limitless again, was against JT Dunn, and that match was un freaking believable. Speaking of JT Dunn, he's taking on Anthony Green in a grudge match. These two hate each other right now. Anthony Green is not making friends with anybody. He's just making enemies left and right. And uh, JT Dunn is... is is that enemy and I wouldn't want JT Tun as an enemy. So, uh, and then, uh, the big draw here, Matt cross versus PD Williams, uh, two crazy innovators of offense. Um, PD Williams, uh, the originator of the Canadian destroyer, which I will tell you, Greg, my son 
did a Canadian destroyer tonight on his Seamus <laughs> on his Seamus <laughs> wrestle buddy. I swear to God, he did it. And I, I lost my mind. I couldn't believe it. So I'll have to get a video and, and show you because it's nuts. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, let's see. Christian Casanova taking on Ethan Page. That's going to be crazy. Everybody uh, is super pumped when uh, Ethan Page comes back to town. Uh, Christian Casanova hasn't been back in Limitless uh, probably about a year now. But that guy is super slick. He's amazing. Uh, and then you got a uh, six women scramble: Jessica Havoc versus Tara Calloway versus Skyler versus Willow Nightingale versus Davian versus Kennedy Copeland. Uh, it's going to be a crazy, crazy match. Their scrambles are always electric at Limitless, and uh, this time it's the ladies' turn to just go crazy in a scramble. You got the Thick Boys coming up, coming back. They're taking on the Hometown Boys. Main State Posse, and uh, I believe Cam Zagami is going to be there as well, and uh, a couple others. Um, uh, Jordan Grace will also be there, uh, and uh, Mr. Grimm, Mr. Grimm coming back. Love Mr. Grimm, so put him in a body bag, Johnny. No, anybody? Crowdy Kid? No, Greg? Oh, I got you. I okay, got you. gotcha. There we go. Yeah, so it's it's a crazy card. Uh, again, it's November third. Uh, let's see. Starts at seven thirty. It's at the Portland Club. Get your tickets. Limitlesswrestling.com. And the very last plug is uh, we're gonna plug as always. Uh, Strong Style Brand. Go to strongstylebrand.com/slash main event pod. Use code main event pod at checkout. You're gonna save yourself ten percent on your purchase, and uh, it's a great way to. Uh, you know, throw a little, throw a little moolah our way. We get a little cut of that of your order, so uh, it's a nice way to support the podcast and get some pretty sick gear from StrongStyleBrand.com. They've got everything: t-shirts, hoodies, hats, uh, shoes, shorts, flags, whatever you want. Uh, very cool stuff. So that's about it, man. I know we went a little long in the plugs. My apologies, but had a lot to say. I've, I've got a lot to sell, apparently. So. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so let's dive in, man. TLC, what did you think? What did you think of TLC on a whole? Like, without really getting into any details, uh, tables, ladders, chairs, what's the deal with it I nowadays? Thought it, I thought it was an entertaining show, and I thought, obviously, it was interesting with all the last-minute changes. Uh, it's very rare that you see, like, that uh, a show change that dramatically from what was planned. But what I thought was interesting is that – they made these changes, like they put in Kurt Angle and they put in uh, AJ Styles versus Finn Balor, and it's it, it makes you think. It's like it, I just sat there and I was like, so they know what we want to see, <laughs> and they know what matches we want, and they know that we want to see Kurt Angle wrestle, but they they don't do it. Yeah. So I was entertained by the show, but I sat there just kind of confused about they understand the kind of matches they want to they that we want to see as fans, but they're n not willing to give it to us. Like obviously they gave us the Shield reunion, which is great. I personally think it kind of seems like they're just doing it to you know <laughs> confuse fans about whether or not they want to cheer or boo Roman Reigns. Yeah. Uh, but I just sat there and I was just like, I don't understand. This makes me think that they know, but they don't want to give us. Like, why hasn't Kurt Angle been wrestling? Right. Like, they were going to do this whole thing with him and Triple H, which sounded fantastic. And, and I don't even know if they're going to do that or if they just. From what I heard is that Kurt Angle couldn't wrestle. And he wasn't medically cleared, and then all of a sudden he can wrestle. So I just it it made me just like question the booking decisions in WWE even more than I had before because I, I just don't. It just showed me that they know, and they just don't want to make pull the trigger on things, right? Which it, I don't understand why. Yeah, I I, I don't either, and. I definitely get it, man. I see your point. Uh, I, it was weird to me that they would, that they would bring in both of those like high profile 
guys and make such high profile matches without any kind of build. Like I was, I was a little upset too about it. I was like, man, there, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to like look a gift horse in the mouth, but it's like, I will take Finn Balor versus AJ Styles all day, but I, I still would have appreciated like some kind of build with it, you know, where, I mean, it could have been all surrounded, you know, by, or, or around built around like the bullet club stuff. Um, like it just seemed like so, uh, I guess just really like anticlimactic to just throw them in a ring together and have them fight without any storyline build. Like there was just two faces, which I'm fine with. I don't mind two, two heels or faces going at it. I, I actually like that d- dynamic a lot, but it just felt kind of flat to me for some reason. Yeah. Um, you know, where I was like, man, there's nothing really behind this. It doesn't really matter who wins. Um, they're really not going to extend it any further. And it just seemed like kind of like, uh, I God, I don't want to say a throwaway, but it just seems like something that didn't matter as much as it should have, as much as that match should matter. Yeah. And then, and then the Kurt Angle stuff, I agree. Like, I thought I was like, I thought Kurt Angle like couldn't wrestle and i was like man he's gonna like die in there so then like before the match happened i was like okay well maybe he's gonna like just stay on the outside and not get too involved um and i guess essentially like he did he he got like taken away and you know sat you know some of the match out and then came back but i don't know i thought that whole thing was lame too and and even during it like live like i remember you like texting me saying you know oh that's too bad i i really wanted to see like the kurt angle entrance um and I agree. I thought I wanted to see it too. I was like waiting for it. And then when he came out with them, the guy, the guy hasn't wrestled in 11 years. Yeah. You would think that it'd be like a bigger, yeah. a bigger deal. Him coming out to the, his music and his entrance would be enough reason for me to change the channel. Or, I mean, obviously that's not how it works because it's the WWE network, but for me to throw on the pay-per-view just to see that entrance you know what i mean so it's right. kind of strange like i understand why they did it because they're still trying to cash in on the shield thing which makes sense too but i don't know why you wouldn't just have him come out with his entrance in the in the usa singlet like that's what people want to see like if people are excited about Kurt angle for nostalgia reasons they're not going to want to see him dressed up as a shield and i what was funny is I was seeing on Twitter like that the weekend b- before that happened, like people were like kind of making fun. Like here's they were do it using a two K 18 uh, to re to create the shield entrance with Kurt Angle <laughs> as like funny. a joke. And then that's yeah. exactly what ended up happening. So it was kind uh. of, uh, our uh, life imitating art a little bit, but I, I, I just another thing that really perplexing. Like the people that are excited about Kurt Angle, um, remember the entrance, and they, they're excited about seeing that part of it. You know what I mean? So yeah, and he just looked like confusing he, part of that. Yeah, and he like looked way too happy to like be part of the Shield, and like it just it just didn't look serious at all he just looked like hey guys like i'm, I'm in the shield <laughs> this is fun right like he's smiling and stuff. i don't know it was just really it was really hard to buy in on that and, and i think just because it was like so maybe just so last minute and they didn't know what to do but i don't know man like they have writers that get paid a lot of money and and you know executives <laughs> that get paid a lot of money to come up with like uh, like better stuff or they get, get paid to come up with stuff that should be better. Um, yeah, they were, de- they were definitely scrambling. I think th- the issue was that they, when they, by the time they made the announcement, they didn't have any shows left to kind of tie things together. So right. I don't like, I don't really fault them from a store, uh, like a storytelling standpoint. Like they, they did what they had to do to like, rush some matches um but like but but don't you feel like they just they like they foiled like kurt angle's comeback like it like if he is going to be an in-ring competitor 
They did. They like, did. Or if he was, even if it was for one match, like even if he was going to come back and wrestle for one match, like shouldn't have been more high profile, like they, against they Triple H or against moment. something else, or or at least build like a big story around it. Like I was envisioning them, you know, that would have been a good way to like elevate Jason Jordan to the next level. Like you know, Kurt Angle screws Jason Jordan over, or vice versa, and then they have like this big beef, and like and that's Kurt Angle's like big return is to face his son. Like, I mean, I don't know. It's just like, it seems like it would just be like a bigger thing than just like be the third man in the shield as a sub, like to be, you know, the first time wrestling in a WWE ring in 11 years. Like they, they wasted the buildup of his return to the ring. I think that was a big one. And then the first time that AJ and Finn Balor met in WWE probably could have been saved for a bigger stage. Yeah. So I think that they wasted those two things. But at the same time, it's like Roman Reigns was a big part of the the pay-per-view. So who are you going to get to replace him that's going to have the same impact? I don't know. Like, I I get what they did. Like, they pulled out the big guns when they had to. Yeah. But like I said, it, it just shows me that they understand what people want to see. They're just not willing to pull the trigger on it, I guess. Yeah. Unless, what, have, what, unless their hands are tied. I think I would have done, and again, this is just me like thinking out loud, spitballing here. I would have taken Kane out of the match uh, of the, you know, of the TLC match because really, I don't think he needed to be in there. I thought that was a, such an odd pairing anyway that he was there, uh, and I would have put him against against uh finn and because that's something that that's a story that you could build on and i know that it might have been like eh oh it's just kane like whatever it wouldn't have been as like high profile as the age but you didn't need it that high profile like you said you didn't need such a high profile match for for tlc like t- you know that's that's a wrestlemania match like that's that's a um that's a survivor series match like you're telling me you have Survivor Series right around the corner. You don't build something up with, you know, a, a guy from SmackDown, like SmackDown's best in AJ Styles and Raw's best in Finn Balor and pit those two guys against each other. Like, that's a huge match. And that's something that you could market on Survivor Series, which is one of their big four. And that's that would get huge buys. But but you wasted it on TLC for no reason. People were, People were already buying TLC. Like... And again, nobody's buying this. This isn't pay-per-views anymore. Like the people subscribe to the network. Like nobody was like nobody was just getting the network for that month for TLC because of the Shield reunion. As cool as it as it is. Yeah. Nobody nobody's doing that, I don't think. You know? So I don't know. It just seemed it seemed, yes, like scrambling and last minute, but I just think that they could have done something better. Um but anyway, uh I thought, I thought the main event. Like that being said, I thought the main event was like okay. I thought it was pretty good. Uh, I didn't it think was, that it was like it was like it was just crazy. There was so much happening, but yeah, I thought it was good. I was entertained. Yeah, there's like too there's too much going on. Too many people and like, yeah. and then like like the, them turning on Braun was weird. That was weird because, I mean, if you think about it, it was really Kane that <laughs> was the issue. Right, but then they all turned on Braun and threw him into a garbage truck, which made. By the way, uh, it made me realize that I have no idea how a garbage truck works. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I guess I, I guess it's a knowledge gap on my part because I saw Braun Strowman go in and I was like, "Well, he's dead," because I just assumed that it it completely crushed all garbage that goes into that part of the garbage truck. Yeah. <laughs> When it went, when it brought him in, I was just kind of like, I don't understand how garbage trucks work anymore. <laughs> yeah, like that is a dead man now. Like I don't, yes. I don't. He's dead, right? Yeah. So, I like that somebody. Uh, I can't remember what it was, but somebody posted like, uh, whatever county like Kane is running for office for was like, yeah. you know, like Knoxville, whatever uh, nominee, like murders man on live tv or something <laughs> it made me laugh they were like the opposition's gonna have a field day with this one yeah yeah <laughs> so good um and then 
the Finn AJ match. Okay, here's my beef with this. I thought it was a great match, but the fucking network like destroyed it for me. Like I, I could not get past the glitchiness of the WWE network. Yeah. Uh, and I don't know if this happened to anybody else. So listeners out there, if this happened to you, let me know. But like, I couldn't get it to work. It like kept skipping back like to Finn's entrance. And I was like, what the hell is this? And then it would like glitch back. And then the audio was off. Uh, and it was so weird. And I was watching it live. Like I, I, I kept like backing out all the way and then like just going right back into my WB network. And then, trying to like pick up where i left off and it was just like a nightmare and so i actually gave up on it and i didn't watch it until yesterday and it started to do the same thing and like the audio was so far off i didn't i saw the ending but it i heard the ending before i saw the ending it was like you know finn does the coup de gras and then so you heard the one two three you- I heard the I heard the one two three, and then I heard like Michael Cole say like, you know, and Finn Balor wins or whatever, you know, beats AJ Styles, and I was like, oh, okay, and then Ooh. like, and then like you wait a good like five count, and then he and then he he drop kicks him in the corner, and then goes up and does the coup de gras, and then and then pins him, and I was like, oh, but I'm hearing his music <laughs> like already, <laughs> so it was. And, and it, I don't know what the hell is going on, but it, like it happened yesterday too, and it, so it kind of ruined it for me a little bit. But uh, from what I saw, like the match was crazy. Like the match was really, really good. Um, yeah, I, I, I think AJ. It's funny. Somebody, one of the announcers, it might have been Michael Cole, said that uh, you know AJ Styles is you know in his prime. And at first, I was like, I don't know, is he in his prime? I mean, the guy's like thirty eight. So like, is he in his prime? But then, man, right. but then, I thought the exact same thing. But then, like, I don't know, man, like watching that match and then watching him on Raw because he was on Raw um, as like a special guest, like just watching that guy wrestle. I'm like, fuck, man, I think he is in his prime. Like, he is so good. Like, yeah. just so good. Like, crisp. he's crisp and everything's so smooth. It's crazy. Yeah. Like, and he, like, and it doesn't like I feel like his his opponents can screw things up and he can save it. It's it's yeah, it's and it's like flawless. Like you'll never know. Like yeah, it's crazy. Like the, you know, there's like one spot where he did like a springboard uh, into a hurricane rana, like to Finn who was like sitting on the top of the turnbuckle, and I was like, Jesus Christ! Like he he made that look so easy. You know, like so easy. And it's not like he's a tiny guy. It's not like he's this like luchador flying around. I mean, he's got some good size to him. Like, it's just crazy, like how talented he is. And uh, yeah, you know. So yeah, it was funny. Like I kind of like rolled my eyes. Like sure, okay, yeah, he's in his prime. Like you're just saying that because he's like finally in WWE, and the guy's like in his late thirties. And then I was like, oh yeah, well you know what? He, he really is. Like after watching you know that match and then seeing him on Raw, it's like damn. So uh, yeah, I thought it was a good match, man. Really good. Um, yeah. What did Agreed. what did you think of the what did you think of Asuka's debut on the main roster and uh, and Emma's performance against Asuka? Uh, I didn't think it was very memorable. Right. I mean, I thought it was a, I thought it was a decent match. Um, but nothing. I mean, it was more about her debut, I guess, than anything else. Yeah. Uh, I feel like, especially with Emma. I think the two of them could have a better match than they had. But um, I thought it was decent. Yeah. I I didn't watch it live. I missed it, and I watched it like a day or two later. Um, But I read some of the comments on Twitter like right during it or right after it happened, and it was getting a lot of praise. Like a lot of people were saying, you know, that Emma – like held her own and like really showed like why they like chose her to like for Oscar's debut and like yeah. Oscar kind of like put her over, even though like Oscar got the win, like Emma shined too. And like, it kind of put her performance over and, and then I don't know. And then I watched the match and I was like, Oh man, I don't know. Like, it, okay. like I, didn't, I didn't get that at all. Like I, yeah, I thought I did. There was it by no means. It was a bad match. Right. But at the same time, I think they're both, capable of a better match so yeah 
Yeah, I think, were, I'm, well, maybe I'm just a dick. I don't know. No, no, no. I agree. I think that there were a lot of like missteps. There were a lot of like kind of like little awkward moments where, you know, it didn't look that bad, but it was just like it was a it was a it was a little miss where like yeah, one of them didn't like thought the other one was gonna like throw a strike and then like they weren't doing anything and you know and it's only a split second but if you're if you're so kind of accustomed to like like you just said with AJ Styles where things are just moving and everything's flawless like and I know that not every match can be an AJ Styles match but like if you're in the WWE you're you're classified as you know one of the best in the world I mean you're getting paid the big bucks that's the major leagues so it really shouldn't things like that shouldn't be happening you know and yeah. Those two have worked enough with each other that they should be a little bit more uh, fluid. And I don't know. It just didn't. Um, it I, I didn't. I didn't love it. I thought it was okay. Like, and I like Emma a lot, but I didn't. I didn't love her in this match. Like, I think Emma is really good. And for a long time, I've been like preaching, like, oh, she's not getting her due. You know, this whole like that weird thing that they try to do and like change her, change her gimmick like take her out of those sunglasses and make her wear like a, this dress. And then she like never debuted like that it was super awkward and weird. Yeah. It was so crazy. <laughs> yeah, I was like, it just seemed like such a waste of time. <laughs> it was so know- like, it's just one of those things that I feel like WWE does that. They're like, Oh, maybe nobody will notice. <laughs> and yeah. it's just like, uh, we're going to notice if you do a video package for like, six months and then there's no payoff like right that's one of the things that like pisses me off the most about wwe that they think that we don't care when there's no payoff right like it like i just don't understand what the thinking is like they just like abandon storylines like it even if the storyline sucks ass like i still want to know what's gonna happen and that's that I mean, that's the bottom line. Like, okay, here's a here's a really crappy example. <laughs> Bring it. Everybody yes. get ready. So, <laughs> so the Bella Twins had a feud, and it was pretty bad. Just like the things they were saying to each other, it was pretty rough, and it was you know it was booked pretty well, I thought. And then they had a match, and the loser was going to be the servant of the other person for, like, I don't know, six months or a year or something crazy like that. And then they literally – and then Nikki won and was the servant of Brie. And they literally abandoned that after, like, two weeks. And then – not only did they abandon the fact that Brie was supposed to be Nikki's a servant, but then they just kind of put the entire feud behind them and was then they were friends and they were sisters again and everything was fine in like literally no time at all. Yeah, they started doing and, twin magic again. Yeah, yeah, it was it it was ridiculous and it those types of things happen all the time and uh, you know, and I, once again, I like to see things from both sides, and I see that they're doing that because they just, they're like, okay, this isn't working, and it's not doing anything for our ratings or whatever, and nobody will notice if we just drop this, And but that's not the case. People want to know, even if it sucks, even yeah. if it sucks, people yeah. want to know what happens. Right. Like I'm still waiting to hear or find out uh, what happened when the Wyatts dragged Kane away during oh, like, yeah. Bray yeah. Wyatt's debut. <laughs> like, or also, I want to know who's behind GTV if we want to go back even further because we yeah. never found out. Right. You, know, you want to talk about you want to talk about the long con? They should tell us who's behind GTV now. Even though that happened in like I don't know 1997, I can't even really remember how long ago it was. Right, right. But, uh, but little things like that, <laughs> and then but see, I beg for that type of thing, and then we find out that the the uh, 
infamous Raw General Manager's Hornswoggle under the ring with a laptop, and then I'm like, maybe, maybe I don't want to know what's going <laughs> to happen. Yeah, yeah, if that's the payoff, yeah. like, come on. Usually, um, usually if they don't know if they don't know where they're going with a the story, they're like, uh, Hornswoggle? Yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll just throw Hornswoggle in there. That's fine. <laughs> um, let's see, sticking with, sticking with the, the women here, uh, Alexa Bliss took on Mickey James. Uh, she defended her Raw Women's Championship. Um, I thought it was a pretty good match, man. I, I think, uh, man, I think Mickey James is amazing. Like, I think she's so good. Uh, she's another one of those wrestlers that, I mean, she's been doing it for a long time, but like everything she does is really smooth. Like all of her transitions are great. Her moves are pretty awesome. Um, you never really see her make mistakes. And then if she does, it's pretty subtle and she can recover pretty quickly. And uh, I just thought this was a good match. And I thought the buildup to it was really good. Um, I don't know how you feel about it, but I thought it was good. Like the whole like Alexa Bliss calling Mickey James old, I thought was like was like it was great. I thought it was uh was smart in. I mean, I I think Mickey James like handled handled it really well. Uh, Mickey, I think, is better on the mic than a lot of people give her credit for, and uh, I she's one of my favorite uh, female superstars to look at as well. I think she's. <laughs> She's fantastic. I love Mickey James. So, uh, what, did, what did you think of this match and this build? So here's here's what I'll say. I think Mickey James is probably the second or third best uh, women's wrestler on the Raw roster. Um, I think that. Who do you think's first? Who do you think who who do you think's better than her on the Raw roster right well, now? I'm a, I mean, I'm a Sasha Banks guy. So okay, gotcha, gotcha. Sasha Banks is number one for me. And then, and then probably Mickey or Bailey, I would say. Gotcha. Okay. Um, oh, Emma's pretty good too. But now Oscar's there. I don't need. Don't 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 quote me on any of this because <laughs> <laughs> Ross Ross got a pretty impressive uh, roster of women's wrestlers, I guess. So, um, I would say that. Uh, Mickey James is is great in the ring, and I th- I do agree with you on the mic. I think she's I think she's fine on the mic. I I don't see any issues there. Um, the old thing kind of throws me because she's uh so still so damn good looking, <laughs> and I'm just like, right. They're throwing the old thing, old uh, insult at her. And it, maybe it's because I'm old, and she was like, when I was like uh, watching her, like when her previous run in WWE, I was just like, I'm kind of throwing back to that, and I'm like, well, Mickey James isn't old, I so this, this doesn't really make sense. But um, besides yeah. that, I, I thought the match was good. I think the program that the. I think they work well together, Alexa and Mickey. Um, they have a little bit of history because they like had a thing on SmackDown. So I think that works really well together. Um, I think Alexa owns her, the heel persona better than she's one of the best on both rosters right now at owning heel persona. And I think she does a great job. Um, And, uh, and I think she's, I think she's a surprise to a lot of people because I don't think that people expected a lot of success she's getting. Right. Just she's the first to get to to have the both the SmackDown and the Raw Women's Championship, and I think she deserves it. She seems like she works her butt off, and I think that, um, like I said, she really her character is fantastic. Um. I think even when she was NXT, I was I was commenting that I think she's a great heel, and um, yeah, I thought it was a good match. Um, I like both of them. Um, that's it. Yeah, uh, right after the match, like they they did this a couple times after matches, and I found it to be super oh, awkward. But I know what you're gonna say, and I yeah. hate they need to stop. Yeah, like why do they send in uh, someone with a mic to ask? 
you know the loser or the well actually in the Enzo match they asked him questions but like yeah it was weird like they sent uh, this woman in there to ask Mickey James like her thoughts on the match and like she's still like catching her breath and like it was weird like to ask that person to cut a promo like immediately okay. after because it's awkward it's super awkward okay here's my theory the only good reason to do like an a, a, a post match interview like that in the ring is that something is going to happen Right. Like somebody's going to get attacked or somebody's going to come out or something. So they're doing these awkward post-match interviews where absolutely nothing happens. So it throws you off for when something does happen. And that's literally the only <laughs> reason I can think that they're doing these weird ass. Even Enzo, who's good on the mic, I don't, I don't really don't care what Enzo has to say oh, after I, the match. Yeah. I thought his was terrible. I, like he couldn't even catch his breath. Like I was, yeah, I was like, man, is he really like this winded? Is he really this out of shape? Um, it was weird, and he like lost his it voice too. Sense. He lost his voice too. He had like no voice, and they were like, okay, so you're gonna talk all this shit before the match, and then after the match, you're gonna talk more shit. He's like, yeah. well, I have no voice, so I don't know. Uh, the boom, I'm having a stroke because you're making me talk when I I can't breathe. Yeah, one of my favorite of all time, like kind of interviews like that is a. Uh, back like in the 90s you ever see uh vader do that like uh, yeah oh my god that's the best <laughs> they got, that's like, one of my favorite my favorite wrestling <laughs> oh, it's, my, it's one of my favorite things too i can't remember who it is like who's i, I don't think it's mean gene he would have been in wcw but then it, he calls himself a fat ass yeah he goes he goes maybe vader time's over i'm just a fat piece of shit <laughs> 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 like live, like live on the air, yeah. <laughs> uh, so funny, and he just like oh he just God. knocks the mic out of whoever's hand it was. Now that now that is a Vader T-shirt I would buy. Yeah, yeah, and that's like a moment too. Like if like if all of these if all these like immediately after match interviews were like that, I would I would welcome them. That would be great. Uh, like uh, that bitch. Yeah, if she was like, I am, I am an old whore. I am this. That would be terrible. Like, that would be the best. I'd, I would laugh hysterically, and I'd be like, yeah, we got to do more of these interviews. This is great. But, man, that Vader one, that Vader one's so good. Oh, maybe maybe it's Vader right time's up. over. I'm just a fat piece of shit. It's right up there, right up there with, uh, with Psycho Sid asking for another take. Oh, man, I love wrestling I'm bloopers. I'm live, yeah. TV. Oh, we're live, pal. <laughs> Let me do another <laughs> take. Oh, Sid, what are you thinking? Unbelievable. Uh, uh, well, what about that Enzo Amore match? Uh, Enzo just retain or not even retains. He captures the uh, cruiserweight championship again. Like, why even give it to Kalisto if you're just gonna give it right back to Enzo? Why can't Why can't they book the cruiserweight division? I don't know, but I want I want 20 minutes of mic time for Kalisto every. <laughs> You love Kalisto love on the mic. I love Kalisto on the mic. I've never seen someone just go down in flames as much as he does when he has a lot of mic in his hands. Speaking of bloopers, oh yeah, Lucha oh, Lord. The, That interview that he gave where he said Lucha things and just, just like... Screams shit and runs off yeah. the screen is, is another one. Yeah, you can put that up there with the Vader one for sure. Yeah. He screams, God damn it, like off, off God camera. God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> oh, Kalisto, oh. the best. Whenever I'm down, I watch that and it <laughs> cheers me up. <laughs> it makes oh, me God. happy. I wish I could remember what he said on uh, on Mon not this past Monday, but the Monday before. I think I texted you and I was like, "Kalisto has a hot mic alert." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hot mic alert on Kalisto. Tune in. Yeah, so <laughs> Everybody good. Watching this. Yeah, um, I I, I want to talk about Enzo for a minute. Uh, have you? Because I I think everybody maybe a, like a year ago uh, loved Enzo, loved Enzo and big big cast. Uh, Enzo, especially because he was just so he's so good on the mic. Um, but has like his, I don't know, I guess personal image, uh, where like all this, like all these backstage comments, like keep coming out about him, and yeah, um, and that he's like kind of that character 
all the time. He was like really that guy, like 24 seven and how annoying that would be. Like if that's now like the, like the general impression of him, like has that changed like your view on him? Cause it kind of has mine where I'm like, man, that would be super annoying. Like I actually am not that big of an Enzo fan anymore. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't really care. I, I think that um, here's the thing. Even before we learned all about this, all this stuff, appar- like apparently about Enzo, right, right, is allegedly, I'll say, sure, is that um, is that Twitter was already started. You, what you do is you you go on Twitter, and if Twitter likes somebody, you set a three month clock. You set the clock for three months. And then you give it three months and then you go back and check on Twitter and everyone's like, wow, well, he's, oh, he's out here again. And they turn Twitter turns on a wrestler with within three months. So here's a bold prediction. Uh, Twitter loves uh, Elias right now. Um, I, what is 1025. So, January 25th, Twitter will be sick of Elias and <laughs> sick of him coming out with his guitar. That's my guarantee to you. So even before we knew all about this stuff with Enzo, um, he was – the people have already turned on him and him and Cass. They, they were already sick of the – what they were saying, you know, that, you know, he comes out and says the whole, the same thing over and over again. Yeah. I don't care. That's, that's what wrestling is. Like the rock came out and said the same thing all the time. Stone cold came out and said the same thing all the time. Hulk Hogan came out and said the same thing all the time. The new age outlaws came out and said the same thing all the time. So it's just, it's just kind of, I think, where we're at with wrestling. Yeah. Is people, it, wrestlers go through a cycle, and people will love them, and then they will hate them, and then they will go back to loving them eventually. But the one thing you can say for Enzo is, this is the most exciting that 205 Live has been. I agree. For, to, they, the Cruiserweights have main evented raw for i don't know like two uh like twice in the last like month and a half right right Did you ever imagine that happening before enzo came into the picture and enzo's not the best in the ring i get that but he is by far the best on the mic on 205 live they i think that it is um a a needed shot in the arm for that show. But I understand that he's a piece of shit as a human being and people don't like him. Like I get that part of it. And I understand that that ruins it for some people, but you know what? Shawn Michaels once was a piece of shit. And, but he was also the most entertaining person in WWE. So, I mean, you get that trade off a little bit, but you just have to. I don't know. I take. No, I think those are good points, man. I think those are great when, points. When people when people don't like someone, don't like a certain wrestler, I feel like you have to take it with a grain of salt because people will turn so quickly on certain wrestlers and storylines and gimmicks and stuff like that. That I just, I'm not so quick to shut down on Enzo yet. I guess, and I and I feel like I'm. I feel like I'm in the minority. And and I understand why, but I just I'm still on the Enzo train. No, I and I uh, <laughs> I agree, man. No, I think that like what they did with him with turn him as a heel was perfect. I was like, man, that that's that's great. I mean, people are people are already turning on him, so why not just make him a heel and like you know give us a reason, uh, even more of a reason to boo him. And now right. he's like now he's like cocky, but in like a different way. Um, that's that's perfect because. Because people think he's a heel in real life. People think he's an asshole. So yeah. they've they steered into it, which is so not what WWE does. Like right. they right. they should they should steer into it with Roman Reigns, which they're not. And I feel like they're going they're on the edge of 
of getting into John Cena territory where they'll never be able to turn him heel. Roman Reigns, that is. Oh, right, right, right. So, so I feel like WWE actually made the right call here and has made him a heel, but they've also put him in an environment where he can thrive as a heel because he's with cruiserweights, he's with guys his own size, so he can actually, you know, throw his weight around because he's, like, with guys his size, but he's he's also getting to use his skills on the mic, and um, I don't know. I don't know if, like, the cruiserweight guys are all reacting to it on Twitter, and I don't know if that's, like, part of this part of the storyline like they hate enzo i'm sure they all hate him in real life but you know if you they're all amazing in the ring but unfortunately that's not enough yeah they don't have like none of them really have like really memorable like identities that or at least that they're like getting marketed uh on like they're just segregated in like their own show and like they just don't they gotta they have to i know we talk about this all the time they have to get worked in like really like way more consistently uh to raw and uh and and even smackdown um just like work them individually like into storylines and like factions and whatever they have to give these guys more of a purpose than just like fighting amongst them- themselves because unfortunately like it's the coveted prize of the cruiserweight championship just isn't that important to people and yep. like I couldn't even tell you when 205 Live is on because I don't have I much mean, time. And I love all those guys. I love that watching them wrestle. Absolutely. But I just Absolutely. don't have time to watch a whole nother show. You know? Yeah. So I agree. I agree. I, it's like my time's limited. I don't even watch NXT as much as I, I want yeah, to. Same here. And, and then I think about 205 Live and I'm like, I can't do a fourth show. But – if it was more entertaining, if they did something to draw me in, uh, maybe I would make the effort. I don't know. Right. But, but and I think the stuff that they're doing on Raw with Enzo is, is great. Is like is is fantastic. You know, like it's all those guys are in there. I just think that they need to identify these guys more. Like who are the heels? Who are the faces? You know, like who? Like what are the storylines? Like really get the storyline out on raw more than just like oh hey enzo's an asshole and everybody hates him like i know that like one of the last couple episodes like uh right after kalisto won like the episode after that uh you know enzo had like hired some of these guys to like jump kalisto and like that's great like you've you've decided uh sides you've created that division between good guys and bad guys within you know within the cruise rate division it's 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 what it is so build on that you know like there's guys like tony niece and guys like brian kendrick who should be heels and um jack gallagher i guess all of a sudden is a heel which right. I th- which i think can work really really well um but they just they gotta be they gotta be on tv more uh you know intertwined with every everybody uh, everybody else so and also know. This weird thing that they do now, where they they've always done since two hundred five live, where they can't mix, <laughs> they can't mix the main roster and the cruiserweight division is kind of weird. Yeah, like, super weird. They're not allowed to interact. Well, they they kind of broke that a little bit with with um, Titus O'Neil brand a brand with uh, Akira Tozawa. Oh right, right. But. They still wasn't anything that there's still no crossover in the wrestling. Like, I think you maybe it could have held on to like Austin Aries, and I guess Neville's gone now too. Yeah, wow. And, and you probably could have held on to those two guys if they weren't just stuck in that one division where there was absolutely nothing they could do to get out of it. Right. I mean, Neville, Neville's a huge loss. I mean, I don't know, like nobody really knows the details behind it. It's been, you know, it's rumored that like he was upset over his match getting cut on the WrestleMania DVD and him not receiving royalties because of that, which is a valid gripe. I mean, I'd be pissed too. Oh yeah, I'd be super mad. Um, you know, and I don't know, like maybe his general overall, you know, business, you know, that he was unhappy with, but 
yeah, I get it. Like you are arguably one of the like best wrestlers in the world and you have to lose to Enzo Amore, who is probably a real asshole in real life. Uh, and you have to drop the title to him. And then you have to lose to him again. And then there's no place to go. You're just stuck in this division. Like I could get that. Like I was actually excited when Neville lost the belt to Enzo because I was like, good, he can get out of this division. He can go do something else. Cause he's, he's better than this division. You know, he, he can right. go be, he can, he should go be the intercontinental champion. Like he should go be the U S champ. Like he could go do something like it's not out of this world to think that Neville could be a world champ someday. I mean, yeah. he's not, he's not too small. I mean, Rey Mysterio did it. I mean, it's there. He is one of the best wrestlers in the world. And I think the heel turn was awesome for him. And he got like 100% better on the mic once he turned heel. Uh, and it was believable. And so I just don't, I just don't know why they don't run with certain things like that. That just work so well. Um, yeah, they even teased like um, they kind of. I think he made like a comment on Twitter about Brock Lesnar, and yeah. it was, like teasing something, and that would have been awesome. That would have been a great match. Like I, I can't. Ah, oh, like if that's a dream had, match. That's a dream match. Yeah, that would have been great if you would have had the cruiserweight champion against the universal champion. Yeah, and I get there's a huge weight difference, but Neville is, I'll say it for like the hundredth time on this podcast, Neville's one of the best wrestlers in the world. Size does not matter. Like he like he would put on a phenomenal match yeah, against, that would be against Brock. Like why why doesn't WWE see the value in that? Like see the entertainment in that match. Like, you know, it doesn't need to be like a long story build. I mean, that could be uh, that could just be like a one-off match, like for something like, you know, I remember when they went to like Japan, you know, and like he fought like Kofi Kingston and I was like, well, geez, like, you know, like it could have been one of those matches, but a hundred times better, you know? So I don't know, man. I, I don't know what the deal is with, with Neville. Maybe if, uh, maybe if like 30 people get viral meningitis, we could get Brock Lesnar versus Neville. I think Neville's definitely done, though. Neville's like gone forever, and hopefully well, they, they cut him from the two hundred five live uh, opening sequence. So yeah. I don't know what that means exactly, but that's he's probably done. Yeah, he's which is done. unfortunate. Well, I mean, it's unfortunate for WWE, but hopefully he turns up like on the indies somewhere, uh, which I'm assuming he would be, uh, because limitless. <laughs> hint, hint. Randy Carver, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, I I would pay a lot of money to see Neville um, in my home state of Maine. So, <laughs> like, he's he's one of my favorites. So, uh, very cool. Uh, let's see what else we have here. Uh, anything else memorable on TLC? We kind of went on a long tangent there on the cruiserweights, but um, the Elias Jason Jordan crap that I oh don't... that was so weird. That was weird. Didn't really care for it. Uh, I don't know. Um, that's about it. I think we've, I think we've covered almost almost everything. There was like a cruiserweight tag match, which again didn't really mean much. Um, yeah. But well, yeah, Cedric Alexander is is great. But so, yeah, so like, they're great. Like those guys are great, and that's that's what we just spoke about was like they're all good like that's a great match to watch and it was a super entertaining match but i don't know the storyline i don't know why certain guys are teaming like i just don't know because i don't watch a you know another hour show of <laughs> wrestling that i don't have time for so um so it's tough again like it's tough to just throw that match on a pay-per-view you know what i mean like that's why that match was probably the lowest rated because People aren't not rated match like quality wise, but like viewed. I'm assuming like because that's people's bathroom break. Unfortunately, because nobody because nobody knows what the fuck is going on. Like nobody nobody yeah. watches 205 Live. So when those guys come on, they go, "Oh well, I don't see these guys on Raw, so I'm gonna go make some nachos." And that's a, a horrible thing to do, right? But that's what people I'm assuming do because they don't know why these two guys are tag teaming and why these two guys are fighting these other two guys. Like it, 
they don't know because they don't watch 205 Live because 205 Live has horrible ratings. Yeah. Like, so, I don't know, man. Uh, let's see what else. What did you think of the whole Under Siege stuff? I, w- I want to talk about this for a little bit. Because... I, thought that was really, I thought that was really cool, actually. Yeah, you liked it? Oh, I loved it. Nice. Very cool. Okay. I love that kind of like, um, I don't know. I didn't see it coming. I Here's what I'm hoping is because they just brought, obviously Kurt Angle is clear to wrestle. So I think that they should do Shane and Kurt Angle in the, like the main event of uh, the Raw versus SmackDown type mm-hmm. match. Um, that's kind of what I, where I'm hoping this goes and uh, shades of their uh, King of the Ring match. Um that where awesome. uh, yeah, he throws him through the. Is that the one where he threw him like? Yeah, uh, he threw him glass. The, uh, glass. That's the only reason I know it's King of the Ring because yeah. um, because yeah, the so, glass that he throws him through says King of the Ring on it. Right, right. Um, I have mixed feelings on it. I like. I don't get me wrong. I love an invasion angle. I love it. Um, when all of a sudden, and they did this last year, when all of a sudden, like, brands just come together, like, heels and faces are on the same team, and they have, like, this unified yeah. agreement to, like, yeah. take on the other brand. Like, that I don't like at all. I hated it. So, I get I, I don't like seeing Corbin, like, cheer on New Day. Like, what the fuck is this? Like, well, I, I think it's good to, like, what? exclude people from that sort of thing. So, like, Baron Corbin, it makes yes. no sense for him to be there uh, because he's just, like, he's his character is he's just kind of an asshole and, like, he shouldn't, he shouldn't be associated with – because he doesn't like, you know, he doesn't like any of those people. So why would he go help them beat other people up? Right. And see, I, I kind of think it should be the other way around. I think that there are guys that, guys that are like the New Day and like AJ Styles who are like bona fide faces on the roster that like they wouldn't do anything like that. Like they're not going to go and like jump, you know, Titus O'Neil and uh, and Apollo Crews. Like they're not going to go do that. Yeah. Real quick. Real quick. What's your Apollo Crews nickname? Uh, Apollo Snooze. <laughs> there it is. I love it. <laughs> and also, uh, also Smiles Davis. Smiles Davis. <laughs> I don't know which one I like more. <laughs> um, but uh but you know what I mean? Like I could I could I could see if like it doesn't even really make sense for Shane to do any of this stuff because Shane is a good guy. You know what I mean? Like yeah, I don't know. It's just again they they do these certain things and some of it's cool like I love an invasion angle but like it doesn't really make any sense like for them to be doing this. Yeah, there's um, no like payoff I guess. And <laughs> here's one thing that kind of was like this doesn't make any sense is at one point Corey Graves, I think it was Corey Graves and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. But he said, our guys are not ready for this. And then I started to think, I'm like, wait, you are an announcer on both shows, and so is Michael Cole. So, <laughs> like, I don't understand. Like, I, there's no loyalty with, yeah. with announcers. Like, there's no, like, except for Booker T and... I don't know. So, I, I, saw somebody, I saw somebody post... Uh, a picture of like Booker T at the announce booth and you say something like, I've never seen anything like this in my 26 years. And then like right below it was like the picture of him, like during the WCW invasion angle. (laughs) So there's like literally been like 30 invasion angles. And somebody also posted, uh, I saw something where it was like, Oh, this is like the, this is like long, long storytelling where, uh, and I can't remember like the exact date or whatever that they were referencing, but it was like, um, you know, an in- invasion angle uh, involving, you know, Kurt Angle and, and Shane from like, I don't know, 2001 or something and whatever it was. I don't know. But it was just like in this, this could be like payback for that. And I was like, well, then that would actually be like kind of cool. Like right. if it was something like that. Like if Shane were to come out, 
because I, I I read that comment before I'd actually seen SmackDown and I mean uh, Raw, and um, and I was like, oh, did this really happen? Like, are they gonna actually mention that that time that that happened? And I was like, okay, but then they didn't, and I was like, oh, okay, somebody was just like like saying a joke, but like that would have made sense. Like that would have made so much sense. Like like there were SmackDown guys surround the ring, and then like Shane plays like the footage from whatever, like you know, 2001 or whatever that was and just be like, you know, Hey, like this is payback for that or something, you yeah. know, like, um, so yeah, it's just like, again, so, they just like, they just so, pump I, the ball. It, so there might be some sort of story going here because, um, on SmackDown, Daniel Bryan kind of got in Shane's face a little bit about, you know, why didn't you tell me this was going down? So, there might be a little bit extra on top of just purely raw versus SmackDown. Yeah. Thinking, that would be cool. Yeah. Which would be good. But like we were talking about earlier, they like to just abandon stuff. So we may not yeah. even ever hear about that again. Yeah. I haven't seen all of SmackDown. I've, I've kind of uh, dabbled into it, but I, I, I got to watch it in full. Um, but you know, Hey, as long as they're like throwing guys in the ring who, uh, allegedly couldn't wrestle Kurt Angle. Um, you know, maybe they can get Daniel Bryan back in the ring or something. <laughs> Jesus uh, Christ. That would be great. I mean... <laughs> they won't. They won't I, ever. I don't, know if you've, I don't know if you've read this story about apparently him not being cleared is like just kind of a misunderstanding. Uh, which yeah, I don't know. I, I, I haven't read uh, that specific story, but I, I know that he's like super vocal on Twitter and responding a lot to like the ring of honor guys. Uh, and he will just basically say anything. And I don't, I, I don't know. I don't get it because, uh, you know, it must infuriate Vince, <laughs> you know, like that, right. you know, that like Cody Rhodes has issued, you know, a challenge to, uh, he, I, I think at one point, like maybe this is a couple months ago, he, he said something, he tweeted at Daniel Bryan about, um, you know, him like challenging Cody, like for the, for his title. And then Daniel Bryan's response was like the day, the, the date that his, uh, contract in WWE ran out. And I was like, wow, like what a ballsy tweet. Like Vince McMahon's gonna be pissed. Like that would be crazy. Um, so I don't know. Like, it's weird that he gets away with so much. Um, agreed. I don't know. I, if, I th- I'm not even entirely sure why they they won't let him wrestle. I think maybe it's a concussion thing. I'm not really sure. Um, but, you know, there's been guys in the past that they've said that they're all done and and they came back and wrestled, like, like Shawn Michaels, for example. Right. So, I don't know. I hope that... I hope that's one of those things where it's like you want, you want it to happen, but I don't know if it'll, if it ever will. Yeah. Like, like uh, you want it to happen as long as not detrimental to like that person's like health, <laughs> like overall, yeah. like, like yeah. I, I don't want to be that selfish fan and be like, Oh, I want Daniel Bryan to wrestle again, no matter what. Like, obviously if he's in danger of, uh, you know, damaging his brain, you know, I, I don't want him to wrestle, but I mean, if it really has just been a misunderstanding and he's just like, you know, and it's just this like liability that WWE doesn't want to cover. Absolutely. I want to see the guy wrestle again, you know? Yeah. Go to ring of honor and wrestle, like go wherever and wrestle. Like, uh, I, I want to see this guy wrestle somewhere once his contract uh, expires. But again, like if it's, if it's like all it's going to take is like one hit to the head and like, you might be brain dead. Like, of course not. Like that would be insane. I'd be, a horrible person. I, I want Daniel Bryan to like yeah. live a happy life and like raise, raise his kid and stuff. Like, I don't want to be an asshole, <laughs> you know, just for like my, my viewing satisfaction in pro wrestling. Like, yeah. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah. I like the riff though, between uh, Shane and DB, like it would be cool if, if Daniel Bryan kind of gets involved in some way. Uh, yeah. So interesting. Interesting. Uh, I, yeah, I guess that was really my only issue is that, you know, I, I would have 
like to see a smaller amount of guys like invade raw and have them all like make sense to be together like have them either all all be heels i thought Um, one of the the coolest part about that was the women yeah that was pretty neat that was pretty cool all this like big giant group of guys were there and like these four women are just standing up to them yeah (laughs) yeah and then out of the crowd, the other the other women come through, and and then it's a brawl. But I thought that that was a pretty, pretty cool part about it. Yeah, that was pretty neat. Um, yeah, I, I I don't mind. I didn't hate it. I, I like invasion angles, but yeah, we'll see. We'll see where it leads. Um, it definitely adds a little bit to Survivor Series. Uh, speaking of Survivor Series, um, they're kind of doing champ versus champ with a lot of these things. A lot yeah. of the- and that part is so forced. Yeah, right? Because like, it's not for anything, right? It's not for, like, I mean, it would be cool if it was, like, I don't know. Would it be cool? I don't know if it would be cool for, if it's, for like, for the belt. But, I don't know, something. It would be something. But I guess it just. I guess it's just for Brock. Right. You, get, you get locked in with Jinder versus Brock Lesnar, which literally nobody wants to see. And then, and then Miz versus Baron Corbin, which, again, nobody wants to see that match. Right. I, I'd want to see them like you should have had people on opposite rosters challenge for the belts. That makes sense. That oh. makes so much sense. So that's how they should have done it. And now we just get these championship champion versus champion matches that don't mean anything. And yeah, they, and they're just not good matchups. Like no. I'd like, I like, those four guys, I, I but I don't want to see them wrestle each other. Right. Like, Jinder and Brock have potential to be, like, the most boring match <laughs> of, of 2017. Like, yeah. Like, I don't find Jinder a very entertaining, like, I love his gimmick. I, I, I'm, I'm still on board with the whole Jinder train. I, I do like, like, the whole... Uh, his whole image, his his, uh, you know, the Singh brothers. I love everything about yeah. it. Uh, like, yeah, I'm with you because it's something. Yeah. I, I like that they're trying to do something different. So right. I I like it as well. Yeah, but, but like in the ring, in the ring, it's 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 you know he's he's kind of uh, kind of a bore, and I don't think that like his first feud like <laughs> with Randy Orton helped at all. Um, and then unfortunately, like Shinsuke, like was, was not, I don't know. It just wasn't great. Um, it's not that entertaining. What's that? Not that entertaining. Yeah. So it's just, it's just, it was, I don't know. I think the guys kind of had a bad draw and I think Brock who only does duplexes (laughs) for a majority of his match, uh, is gonna suck. I think this is gonna be a bad match. I mean, the only the other thing is too is Brock's whole thing right now is is they're just basically let's see if we can get the biggest toughest guy to um, you know to go up against Brock and who who's going to be the the giant that takes down take down Brock Lesnar and then you've got you've got Jinder and Mahal going up against him who's not one of those guys. Right, well, like he, I, you know, it could be entertaining with like the Singh brothers and stuff, and Brock Lesnar, and I think that they'll do something with that, which will be cool. But at the same time, it's like I don't know; it just seems like a waste. Yeah, like you could have like I don't know, Baron Corbin versus Brock Lesnar would have been cool because you could have done because you know corbin's like a bigger guy and he's like an a-hole just kind of like brock lesnar is and just like the promo work between those guys would have been kind of cool and you know i don't know right no and i and that would have been uh, a good matchup too like guys like like just kind of making the cross so you take the you take the mid-tier champ on smackdown and you put him against the the two two nfl guys right two x nfl yeah 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 exactly so you know what I mean. So then you and then you take like maybe even like Miz versus Jinder, um, I think would have been better uh, than yeah. than Brock. Because you would have had like you would have had the Singh brothers on one side and you would have had right. the Raj on the other side and right. 
yeah, I don't know, man. It's interesting the decisions that they make, but I don't know. I don't dig the whole champ versus champ thing. Uh, what's going on? Who who are the ladies? It's going to be Alexa versus who's uh, versus Natalia. Natalia, which again doesn't make sense. Like, yeah. you know, doesn't make sense at all. Um, but anyway, uh, let's see. I was going to throw some uh, throw some names at you. And feel free to throw some back at me. Uh, sure. We'll, we'll kind of end here. Uh, Sammy Zayn, what do you uh, what do you I've like? Always, I've always been entertained by Sammy Zayn, and I think that this is going to be uh, pretty interesting going forward with him and Kevin Owens. Yeah, um, I think that <laughs> just watching him do the ska dance uh, to Randy Orton. Um, last night was uh, was entertaining that's all i needed to see <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think you and i have both been uh pretty big sammy Zayn marks uh despite a majority of our friends <laughs> yes i surprisingly it. yes our inner circle of wrestling fan friends uh nobody see, really seems to like <laughs> sammy Zayn that much which i really don't the, the sammy Zayn hate kind of baffles me because I, I think he's he's very entertaining in the ring and I guess, I don't know, maybe it's just the happy-go-lucky type thing just gets to people, and I, I guess I get that. But um, I think I thought he was entertaining before, and I think him being a heel with Kevin Owens I think has a potential to be huge going forward on SmackDown. I think yeah. it's going to be really entertaining. Yeah, I'm I, excited to see where they go with it. Yeah, I'm really excited for like a really good – Sami Zayn heel run. I think it's it's awkward, but like in a really good way right now. Yeah. Like he because he's still like smiling and happy go lucky, but it's like, but it's almost super sarcastic. Yeah, uh, and it's just great. Uh, it's very very cool. And uh, mark my words, I think this will be. I think he's long conning the shit out of KO right now. Yeah, uh, and he's just like oh, wait. That is an excellent point. I honestly hadn't even thought about that. I thought about maybe him turning on Owens eventually. Yeah. But uh, like, I give I it like a year. Give it like a one year. Con type thing. Yeah. Yeah. One year. They, they're they together for like a year. And then out of nowhere, Sami Zayn. They don't even tease it. I think Sami Zayn just out of nowhere uh, turns on KO. And that's been his plan like this entire time. But it, but he does it like full heel, not like, hey, I got you back, fucker. Like he just like it's like he's still like he's he's just an absolute asshole to KO, and just destroys him. And then you have kind of KO getting a little sympathy probably for the first time from fans, um, and maybe KO leaning a little bit more towards the face side of things, uh, which would be okay. I mean, I like when guys like interweave between heel and face, and I think KO is a guy that could do it um, pretty seamlessly. Yeah, um, I agree. But yeah. Um, um, yeah. What about you? Get anybody in my way? Uh, how about uh, Shinsuke? How do you think he's doing? Oh man, I know. I wish he was doing better. To be honest with you, I don't know what the I don't know what the deal is. I think booking him against uh, Jinder was an issue. I think his first feud against Dolph was an issue, just because it didn't seem. I don't know. It just didn't seem remarkable at all. It was just, yeah. that's what they always do with guys debuting as they, they put them in with Dolph because Dolph is a good worker, you know, but like you got to make it like Dolph isn't making anybody look better. Like Shinsuke doesn't need anybody to help him look better in the ring. Like he's just really good in the fucking ring. So like, I don't know. It's, it's interesting that, that he hasn't taken off on the main roster. Like, I think a lot of people thought he well, would. There's just so much. <sighs> I said many miles to feed, man. It's too much. Yeah, that it's that, and I've said this before, but it's like the main roster. Like they try to hammer things into you to make you think that, make you feel like things are important. And things that are are big and and meaningful, and what they do really well in NXT is you just like you just have that feeling of when you watch a match, like like Shinsuke coming out for a match with just 
somebody in NXT, like that used to like give me goosebumps to like right. hear his music. Yeah. And now when he comes out on the main roster, you just don't care. And it like drives me wild because I should like, there's, it, it just put the emphasis in the wrong place on the main roster. Yeah. Like well, it's there's, too much. Emphasis, there's emphasis on like the name, like the artist, like, I'm supposed to care that he's the artist now, and I don't. I really don't. I like it. it just. I don't know. They yeah. keep. Well, it, I, I think. I think another point too is that uh, it's too much. It's like you see him too much. You see him every every week, and yeah. they have to have him on TV every week. I don't know why, but they they do, and so they put him in like shitty tag team matches, or they put him. They, it's not it's not a spectacle to see Shinsuke Nakamura anymore. Like when he was on NXT, they were, he, you'd go two episodes without even seeing him. Like maybe they'd like recap and show you what he did last week, but you wouldn't even see him because NXT is one hour long and they have like so many people down there that they can afford to like, you know, only tape certain people this day and like, you know, this week or whatever. Um, it's funny. It's it it's, it rings true. It's the same thing that like I heard Colt Cabana say this a long time ago. That when you're a kid, uh, one of the big reasons why Hulk Hogan, why you liked Hulk Hogan so much, is because you didn't see him every day. You didn't see him like every, you know, Saturday morning. You you didn't see him on TV on like Raw every single night. You know what I mean? Like when we were kids, like in the '90s, like you saw him like maybe every once in a while. He'd beat up like Dino Bravo on a Saturday morning. And then like next yeah. week, next week, you know, he might cut a promo with me and Gene, but that was it. You don't, you didn't get to see him wrestle all the time, you know? And that's what you got to see him like on a pay-per-view and they had four pay-per-views back then. Um, and that was it. You know, now you see Shinsuke Nakamura every Tuesday and you see him tagging with, you know, Ty Dillinger or whoever, or Randy Orton or whatever. And it's just, it's, it really loses its steam after a while when, like you said before, you'd see him, you know, every couple of weeks and you'd get goosebumps because his music would kick in or they would do something really cool. And it was a smaller venue and it's more intimate. And like, they'd have a guy playing the violin and it's like, they would do really cool things. Now he's just another superstar on the main roster. And it's, yeah. and it's like, ah, oh, this guy has such potential and it's just, I don't know. He's just another guy now, which is too bad. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I'll throw them back at you. Uh, what do you think of Alicia Fox right now? She's getting some TV time, but what do you she think? Good. It's good. I'm happy that she is because uh, I think she's a. I think she's a little underrated. Um, however, the crazy uh, Alicia Fox character is a little bit much for me, and the yeah. only reason I see that is I just like. It's just like total overacting every time she does it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it gets me a little bit. Um, however, I am happy. Like I was pretty excited about her becoming the captain because I thought that that was something different and giving somebody else the limelight. Even though I, I did say I was um, I did, I did say I was a uh, Sasha Banks fan. Yeah. I, uh, I I was excited to see somebody else get the get the call for that. Yeah, nice. Uh, cool. That's I I feel the same way. So I don't need to talk about Alicia Fox more. Uh, <laughs> you have anybody you throw in my way? I've got one more for you. All right, in the same in the same vein as uh, Shinsuke. Um, how how about Bobby Roode? Oh my God. I know. Like, I don't get when they bring guys up and then just like immediately change, like similar to how you said, Oh, they brought Shinsuke up and he all of a sudden was like the artist, like why they got to coin things like this. Like why bring Bobby Roode up and change anything? Like he's such a good heel. Like why bring him up? And then like, his whole, put him in his whole persona is, is made for, for being a heel. Like who's, whose call was it? To, to make him this face that, like, honestly makes absolutely no sense. Yeah, I, um, I don't know. It it, it makes zero it's just, sense. It's just unbelievable. Yeah. It, it, they've, totally, they've totally ruined him. They've totally ruined 
you know, Shinsuke to this point. I mean, they, they both those guys can recover, but I don't know if we if they get if it's a move to Raw, maybe that will help. But man, oh man, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And and I saw him in like the the under siege thing the other day too. And I was like, ah, Jesus Christ. Like, why, why is he there? You know, like, yeah, I, you know, like you're a face another, now. Like what do no, you, he's another one, of, but he's another, even being a face heel, it doesn't matter. He's another one of those guys that honestly should not care about going to SmackDown. And because that's his, his persona. Right. Right. He's the glorious one. He doesn't give a shit about like representing SmackDown at all. Like and yeah. beating up some raw guys. He's just like he's about, he's about himself, and that's like his thing. Yeah, it's so, so funny. Like it's so I, I I wonder, and I'm I'm assuming that these guys are because they're like obviously very in tune with like their characters and stuff. But like I wonder if when they when they say to him like, hey, so you're gonna be part of this invasion thing why wouldn't he like internally just be like, why, why would I do that? Why would my character do that? Like I, mean, I wouldn't ever to, do that. You have to think that they do say that stuff every once in a while, but I, it's probably falls yeah. on ears. No, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I, it's another just dropped ball, man. I mean, in, uh, maybe they're banking on like a turn, you know, to be like a shocking turn, but it's not like people watch NXT, you know, and people know where these guys come from and, Right. So I, I don't know. And it doesn't fit either. Like his persona doesn't fit him being a face. It fits being a heel. So, yep. And again, like another guy they bring up and they, they make him face Dolph Ziggler, but this, you know, a, a, a heel Dolph Ziggler. It's like, why put somebody yeah. else in that spot? Uh, like why, why not have him come up as a heel and feud with Ty Dillinger, a guy who, and have like a good feud, like a good back and forth feud, not just like, not just rude, uh, uh, you know, going over Ty because I, I love Ty, but like, just, you know, why not just have them like go back and forth and, and duke it out for a couple pay-per-views and like do some 50, 50 booking with them and, and then have like a big payoff at the end. You yeah. Know, like it just doesn't make sense. Um, I anyway, I have one more. We've got, we, I feel like we've gone on forever, but this has been really fun. Uh, I have one more for you. Um, the shield. W- uh, everyone's kind of contemplating like who's going to turn like, you know, when they do break up, cause they can't, they can't stay together forever. Um, run, but like, who do you think is going to be the guy to, to turn this time or to like leave or to, to fuck it up for the shield? Um, it should be Roman Reigns because that would be the perfect spot for that. Of course, right? But I personally think it's going to be Dean Ambrose um, because I I even think a, a heel turn for Dean Ambrose would be good for his character because he's got – I feel like he's getting kind of stale, um, you know, talking about that, that, turn, that Twitter turn that I was – I mentioned before – is like you know i i feel like fans are starting to turn on him a little bit and i i don't think it's i don't think it's deserved because i think he's i think he's very entertaining um but i do think that he could benefit from a heel turn and and turning on the shield but obviously obviously it should be roman reigns yeah i mean i've heard i've heard people say like all three too i've heard people say like oh it'll be seth again i'm like why it doesn't make any sense <laughs> no but like but yeah no I, I agree man i think roman it would be the perfect spot like and go full-fledged heel too not just like uh i'm, the big, I'm the big dog like no like full-fledged like beat the yeah. shit out of dean beat the shit out of roman i mean i beat the shit out of seth like it should not on. it should not be seth because uh having having uh having one of the shield guys turn on turn on him would be would help his face character right right so i don't think i think seth should be the third choice for yeah. that yeah um, and, and and i i agree man i think it'd be cool too if uh, if if ambrose was the guy i think it's like a little too predictable like everybody thought that it was going to be ambrose the first time and then it was Seth, and then it's like, eh, it's going to be Ambrose this time. I, I just, 
I won't like it as much as I would love it to be Roman. Like just that's yeah. I, I think people can really get behind Roman and I yeah. uh, as a as a heel and I don't know why they don't they're not, do it. They're not going to cheer him. Yeah. So I know that's what they're like trying for, but I mean it's not going to happen. So yeah, like very apparent but, So turn into the skid. Right. So, like this is the main event podcast. Uh, everybody who's listening pretty much knows what it's like to to drive in Maine. So when you start to slide, you're supposed to turn into it, and that's supposed to to help. So that's the advice that WWE should take when with their booking is the 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 car is sliding towards Roman Reigns being a heel. So just turn into the slide. Yes. Vince, take the wheel. <laughs> Vince, <laughs> take the wheel. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think we just called Vince Jesus. Oh, boy. Uh, we probably wouldn't be the first time anybody's called no. him. He's, he's called himself that, I think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, man. Let's get the hell out of here. Uh, thank you so much for joining me tonight. I felt, yeah, like, I felt like we yeah, talked yeah. forever, but it was yeah. – uh, we got to get it in uh, when we can here, and that's, that's great, man. I, I love that you – that you filled in for Harmon tonight and um, anytime, anytime. Yeah. Thanks man. Uh, where can people find you on social media? You always, you always ask me this at the end of these podcasts and I'm always like, I mean, I should really double check this before, um, yeah. before, well, before I go, go on, but it's, uh, it's at regulator eight five. Um, there it is on the, on yeah. the old Twitter. On nice. The old Twitter. Nice. You guys can uh, check me out on Twitter at Johnny Fashion. You guys can check out the show's Twitter at uh, what is it? At Main Event Pod. Uh, check out our Instagram at Main Event Pod. Facebook.com slash Main Event Pod. And uh, buy a t shirt. Buy, go to our Teespring. Buy some shirts. Buy, buy two. Buy two. There you go. And, holidays, uh, holidays are coming up. Buy one for yourself, buy one for a loved one. There you go. Look at you, Greg, getting in on it. I love it. Yeah. Yeah, man. Cool. And uh, I, I didn't mention this at the beginning of the show, but if you guys would like, uh, we do have that uh, that hotline still out. If you guys want to drop us a voicemail or a text or something, we will read it on the air. We'll uh, we'll give you a shout out. Uh, that number is 929-260-3099. Let us know what you think of the show. Let us know uh, if you're going to Limitless, what you guys think of that show coming up. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, big shout out to Follow the Fox, Sarah and Dylan. Thank you guys for the intro and outros. Uh, you guys do the music for the show, and you guys are the best. Follow them on uh, Facebook, facebook.com slash follow the Fox Band, and follow the Fox Band.com. That's about it, man. Hey, thanks again for showing up tonight and being yeah, just the man. Me. Yeah, well, that's about it. Bye. <laughs> I'll see you soon, buddy. Listeners at home, thanks for listening. Catch you later. Talking about wrestling from today in the past. It's gonna be a blast. Johnny and Harmon are the main event podcast.